Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the episode 94 of the Speared Sunnies podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. I'm recording this one on Friday uh, to get it up nice and early for the patrons and so I don't have to do it on the fucking weekend. So, um, oh man, how is, how's your year been? We're getting to the end of the year, guys. It's, um, what is it, December... December 8th. Well, so, ooh, hang on. So you would be listening to this on uh, fucking December. I don't know. You can count. <laughs> Look at your fucking phone, you lazy cunt. I'm not going to tell you what day it is. I don't know that you're all listening to this on Sunday. You could be You could be, You could could be. be one of these uh, gracious Patreon supporters who listen to it early. Like, I don't know. It's hard to plug this kind of thing. Um, Patreon and shit. Just fucking, if you want to help me out, go for it. If you don't, yeah. You enjoy it for free. <laughs> um, so, uh, what's been going on? It's the end of the end of the year. How's your year been, guys? Have you had a Have you had a productive year? I feel like I have. I feel like I've done a lot of things this year. Um, you know what? I realized that I've actually. I I just I I can't believe I still remembered this because you know me I can't remember my own fucking middle name. But uh, I'm pretty sure at the start of this year I did. Uh, goals for this year. So I'm thinking maybe in the last podcast of the year, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read out my New Year's resolutions, and we're gonna see how many of them I got. If if you did them as well, fuck, you can read along with me. Actually, that won't be very interactive because obviously yours will be completely different to mine. Because <laughs> uh, I'll be, because mine, I know mine are gonna be put on some weight. So if there's a couple of fat cunts listening to this, it'll be lose weight, and it'll just be like, nah, that's the opposite of my goal. I can't relate to this at all. But what will be relatable is both of us have probably fucking failed, haven't we? <laughs> I'm still a skinny cunt. You're still a chubster. But hey, let's enjoy uh, this podcast. So I'm in the radio studio today. We just finished the the last show of the week. Uh, got some good news about the Luke and Lewis show that I cannot reveal for now, but will I don't even know why I brought it up, so I'm going to talk about something else. You see that uh, fucking Milo Yiannopoulos came to Australia, huh? the the alt-right provocateur, the, the Nazi, or so they say, the, the <laughs> he's a bloody, you know what he is, he's a bloody Nazi, even though he's gay and Jewish and married to a black guy and uh, British, he's a fucking Nazi. It's, you know what it is? So, so this cunt, you, uh, I don't even know why I'm explaining who he is. You all know who he is. He's the fucking dude who's gay. So the people on the right wing go, see, we're not homophobic. We like this guy. He's, he takes a couple of dicks and, you know, he reckons Muslims are evil. And then the left are like, oh, f- oh we, c- we can't really call him a homophobe because he is, he is gay. But we're going to do it anyway, you bloody homophobic dick sucker. So it's just, you know, he's just the, he's just the token guy, no matter what side of the fence you're on. Um, and I, you know, like anybody on the fucking internet, I watch this cunt and, uh, I I think he's kind of funny. Um, and he makes some good points, but I, I just don't understand everyone who takes this guy seriously at his word. Like they'll, what the, it's just classic what the news does. He'll say a joke. And then they'll take that joke and be like, oh, this is his fucking opinion. Or he'll say an opinion and then they'll be like, no, he's just fucking joking. I don't know. But anyway, long story short, he's doing a fucking tour of Australia and Australia's just losing their mind. The media is and everyone's protesting the guy and then all the right wing people are showing up to the shows. Yeah, fuck you lefties. So, you know, I thought, oh, well, I kind of like this dude. I read his book. Uh, I quite enjoyed the book. Um, so I thought I'll, uh, I'll check out a show. I'll be honest, I don't think I was really going to see Milo. I think I was going to see the the fucking spectacle of the entire event. I wanted to see all of the people on the left side of the spectrum losing their shit, all those fucking, you know, <laughs> fucking soy boys with their coloured hair, weighing under 60 kilos, looking like me, but even more unhealthy. And then I also wanted to see the other side, the people on the right, you know, the guys in the fucking tall, tradey trucker shirts, 
kicking the shit out of these uh, the other people and being like, ah, I'm not racist, I just don't like brown people. And then I was just kind of, I felt like I was in the middle of that, just trying to see what was going on. And um, yeah, so I saw Milo's show. It was all right, you know? I was kind of expecting it to, that, you know what, the news and the protesters and even the people who were supporting him All of that mixed together made it sound like it was going to be this fucking horrifically controversial, racist, extremist, right-wing rant that'll fucking destroy, that'll at the same time destroy political correctness and kick Muslims out of the country and uh, be really homophobic and, but also all the right-wing people will be like, yeah, we fucking found our savior and you know what, it was just, it was just, you know, kind of interesting Um, and it wasn't that edgy either. Like everyone, all, all there was, what, what was great was, um, the, the protesters like, man, I, I wish I can get to a point where people are protesting my shows. Like that was fucking cool to see. So what happened was, uh, I had my ticket. I, I got an Uber there and as we're driving to the venue, we're about 50 meters away from the event and you can just hear chanting and yelling and screaming and it just sounds like a riot and the uber driver really nervously looks at me and he's like ah what's uh, going on <laughs> and i'm like oh fuck i don't know because i was expecting some protesters but i wasn't expecting a whole lot because generally australians don't give a fuck about anything enough to uh protest but um uh, the police were actually really good. They shut off the whole street, so they let protesters have their space, and then the people who wanted to see the show have their own space, and they kept everyone apart. Like, you would get to... There was the door of the venue, and then about maybe 80 metres down the street was <laughs> uh, a fucking police battle line that would escort all of the ticket holders to the door of the venue. So you get to the corner of the street, and there'd be like a police wall you got to show them your ticket and then you walk through the police and then everyone on the other side of the police is being like ah you guys are you guys are racist and sexist and homophobic for listening to a guy say things that i don't agree with and you'd be like oh fuck am i man uh i didn't know that about myself but thanks for letting me know (laughs) overly angry uninformed man um and then you'd go into the venue and then the security would check your tickets. And I actually kind of felt sorry for Milo uh, a little bit because on one hand, he's absolutely brought it upon himself and he he eggs this kind of controversy and protesting on. Like he encouraged protesters because controversy is what makes him his money. But then also on the other hand, like, I, I don't know, I couldn't, I couldn't picture myself getting ready for a show where every single person in attendance has to have their bags checked and go through metal detectors and have pat downs because the whole time I'd be getting ready to tell my dick jokes, I would be thinking about every time I've gotten into an arena with a bottle of water or I've walked through to a music festival without having my bag checked or I've gotten into a prison system without having my fucking anus Field out to see if I've got a knife hidden for one of the inmates and I'd be like man if somebody really wanted to bring in a knife to stab me they could definitely fucking do it and then that's all I would think about before I get on stage so um you know what massive props to Milo for being able to get on stage seemingly without thinking about who's gonna fucking stab him in the neck for having the wrong opinions but um yeah so I, I got into the venue and um man there were there was it was, the audience was actually quite surprising. I was expecting like, you know, 100% white dudes, like older white, angry people, tradies and shit like that. Um, you know, just regular right wing people. But it was like most of the people were young. Um, there were heaps of women there. There were quite a few, you know, people from different races. There were Asian people. There were brown people. There was, you know, heaps and different nationalities in the audience and, and, uh, heaps of women and everyone was, and most, most of the people were young. They, like there was a definitely an older demographic there, but most of the people were my age, like twenties, mid twenties, definitely younger than 30. So I thought that was quite interesting. And you know what? Everyone was really fucking polite to each other. Everybody was really nice. Nobody seemed to be there to yell out racist shit or fucking start a riot, bashing up the lefties. Everyone was just kind of there to to hear Milo say some funny shit. I, I kind of and some interesting stuff as well. Um, 
My, my favorite part of it was as I was coming in um, to the venue, I had to walk through the protesters because, you know, I was like, you know what? I don't give a fuck about these protesters. Nobody's going to actually hit me. They're all there to just yell at the other team and then not get too close to them because that's fucking scary. And then they'll go home and pat themselves on the back and be like, oh, like I did it. I, I did a difference today. I yelled at some guy who, f- <laughs> who doesn't even live here. I'm really fighting for the future. It's like, can't donate some money, get a, get a social work job. You know, help out the homeless. Do something actually good uh, rather than yelling at people who already disagree with you and may be up for a debate, but not if you're wearing a fucking mask. So I walked through the protesters and there were so many fans uh, that were protesting the show that came up to me and said, oh man, are you here for the protest? That's awesome. And I didn't say why I was there. I was like, no man, I'm just passing through. And then when I got to Milo's show, there were also fucking heaps of fans in the audience being like, oh man, you're here for the Milo show? Fuck yeah. And uh, uh, it was just, it, it, it just really made me go, oh, okay. On both sides of this thing, there really aren't, like the people on the right side were thinking that the lefties were fucking radical Antifa people who fucking hate the right and who want to destroy Western values. And then the people on the left thought that everyone at the Milo show were like hardcore right-wing racist evil people who are fucking Nazis. And both groups were incredibly wrong. Um, there were just normal people. I mean, they're obviously, I would say out of the two groups, the people protesting were cunts but you know what there were fucking dickheads at the, at, at the milo show as well you know it was hilarious the funniest thing to me I'll, I'll pick out both sides this is what was fucking pathetic if you came onto this podcast thinking that i was going to completely defend one side or the other you are absolutely wrong because there were plenty of things to hate about both sides and i'm not trying to be a centrist here i'm just really being a bit of a cunt who can't like anything i just hate i just hate causes Anyone who was there for Milo that was there as a fuck you to the left side of the thing, I thought was a dickhead. And anyone who was there to protest it because they thought they were actually causing change and fighting against a Nazi, I also thought was an idiot. But here here were the worst people of both sides. So on the protesters, the fucking idiots wearing masks thinking that they are in anonymous carrying flags and poles. I literally saw about three misspelled signs. It was just absolutely ridiculous. Um, and what was funny is it was all, oh, we're standing up against racism and hate. And, uh, every single person at that fucking protest was white. I think I saw less white people at the Milo show than I did in the protest. And, uh, what was quite ironic about it is that the show was held not even maybe 200 meters away from a giant housing commission where, you know, a lot of uh, ethnic people live and nobody in the housing commission gave a single fuck about that Milo show. They were just trying to live their lives to escape that fucking housing commission as they should be. They weren't worried about some gay guy who says cunt a lot. He doesn't say cunt a lot. You know what I mean? Some gay guy who says some pretty offensive shit to get a rise out of people. Uh, but then on the fucking, on the right side of things, the people who were there to uh, see Milo, the, the worst people were just, just the people in Donald Trump hats, like wearing Make America Great Again hats, like that to me is almost even more stupid than the people who were protesting when Donald Trump got elected, like in Australia. It's like, why are you wearing that hat? He's not your leader. He's entire ethos is I don't give a fuck about anything except for America as he should because he's the president of that country he shouldn't be worried about other countries so why the fuck are you wearing a make America great again hat there were people that were at the Milo show that did not even have tickets that were just there to piss off the other protesters who had f- giant flags that said make America great again and I'm just reading these flags talking to these people being like you have never even been to America why are you wasting your fucking time and the same thing with the protesters there was a whole bunch of anti-Trump shit and it's like he's not here he's never gonna be here and he doesn't affect our country at all. 
why the fuck are you staging a protest and a counter protest about some orange dude that's never going to come to this country? But anyway, yeah, so the, the actual show itself, um, uh, it was interesting once you got in there. I think everybody there or most people there were almost at the show as it not not just for Milo. It was like forty percent to see Milo, and then sixty percent as a big fuck you to this perceived lefty overlords that we have. Um, and yeah, so Milo gets on stage anyway, and and I was really interested to hear him talk because I've only ever experienced his stuff. Like I've seen a couple of talks on YouTube and, and lots and lots of clips as well on YouTube and Facebook. And he's pretty funny and he, he makes some good points when he's not trying overtly trying to be offensive on purpose. So I was, I was really interested to see what his talk would be like and if it would be as offensive as, as the protesters were saying, or if it would be as controversial as his supporters were expecting it to be and you know what i think everybody was kind of wrong it was um it was nothing nothing out of the ordinary like do you know what i mean like nothing shocked me he didn't say anything that was too fucked up or anything too racist or homophobic or controversial and and uh yeah, and I, and I think that goes for like both sides. Like his supporters, I felt were expecting some some giant fucking oh my god, I can't believe he said that in Australia. And then I think the protesters were like oh, expecting him to say something hectically racist or homophobic, and he just kind of got on stage and he did just a fairly reasonable talk. I mean, thinking back on it, I think the most controversial thing that he said was uh, Aboriginal art is shit. And, you know, I mean, I disagree, but it also that's an opinion about art. Like, it's definitely a style of art, and I don't think to say that it's crap is particularly racist. It's just an opinion about one culture's art. Like, I think, I actually think Aboriginal art is quite cool, but what's a shit... What's a shitty culture's art? Um, I would say that uh, Picasso era of uh, surreal art, I think that's fucking shit. And I don't know, what's Picasso? Is that Italy? I know that's fucking wrong. <laughs> Wherever the fuck Picasso's from, that, you know, that whole culture that he inspired, I think that art sucks. Um, and that doesn't mean that I hate all Italians or wherever the fuck he's from. You know what was funny? that Milo definitely had a shitload of uh, Australian specific references because you know I'm a comedian I do that when I'm when I'm going to uh, Adelaide I like to take the piss out of how you know how small their city is or when I go to Perth I like to take the, the piss out of how <laughs> like you know the moment you step outside their CBD it's a fucking shithole um, just local references or Sydney you know you guys don't have any nightlife anymore because Mike Baird fucked it just like local references and he clearly did that for Australia and some of them he nailed but a lot of them he was way off like the worst one that he did and he said this one as like I'm gonna say he this okay I take it back that stuff about the aboriginal art that was so light this was the hardcore fucked up thing that he said he said that marmite is better than Vegemite and Vegemite tastes like shit and no joke, he got booed by his own audience. The whole fucking theatre booed at him. And it was like this moment where he was on such a roll saying all these political points and all these kind of controversial jokes. And everyone was like, fuck yeah, we love Milo. And then he came out with like his haymaker of, oh yeah, and Vegemite sucks. And the whole crowd was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, say what you like about Aboriginal art. Say what 
what you like about Muslims and our politicians and how we run our country, but don't you dare come to the golden land of Australia and try and tell me that Vegemite is worse than Marmite, you fucking pom. Go back to your own country. Fuck off, we're full. Like the whole crowd. He just lost the entire crowd by saying Vegemite sucks. And that was what I thought was the funniest thing. Like, that was the most controversial thing that he said, and he probably wasn't even counting on it. And the boo was so loud and so strong that it shocked him. And then he was like, oh, maybe they're, maybe they're joking, and this is something that I can roll with. And then he kind of tried to say it again and, and argue why Marmite was better, and he just, he just got lost in the boos again. I think he got booed twice for it, but... It, uh, it wasn't like a malicious thing. It was like, oh, fuck off. You're just wrong, man. Stop talking about Vegemite being shit. We don't agree. But yeah, overall, I would say that I saw the first Melbourne show. I think he did three. So he might have done some fucked up stuff at the other shows or, or the other two Melbourne shows or wherever else he performed in the country. But overall, man, I think that the, the media storm and the protests and even to, to a certain degree, some of his own supporters made a giant storm out of what was just a kind of amusing political talk that leaned towards the right side of the spectrum. Like, I'm thinking back to it, there isn't really a single political serious point that I listened to and thought, that's evil. Like, there were things that I disagreed with, but there was nothing where I was like, that's f- fucked up to hold that opinion. And obviously, I don't pretend to know every single thing that this guy said seriously. Um, But yeah, his show was just kind of pretty good. And that's, that's really pretty good and uneventful, really. I would say, yeah, that's what I would say. So, um... Yeah, that's kind of all I have to say about his show. I hope that filled you in if you missed it or if you if you were interested to know what it was like from someone who was actually there. Um, so I suppose I left with a better perspective of, of who he is and he's just a fucking genius at manipulating, uh, you know, he's a troll. That's what he does. He makes people angry and he makes people hate them. But at the end of the day, when all of that hatred and anger dies down, the only people are left are the people who would actually like to listen to his more boring stuff, which is what he actually thinks. And that's how you fucking get attention in this world, really. So he's doing that very well. Good on him. Um, I actually tried to get him on the podcast. I did email his press team and uh, we were emailing back and forth and it seemed like we were pretty close to getting him on the podcast, but they only, they just didn't have time in Melbourne because I think one of the venues cancelled. I believe he was only supposed to do one show in a 3,000 seater, but they cancelled. So we had to do three shows in one night in a 1,000 seater. So I guess... Uh, the, yeah, their press people got back. His team spoke to my team, <laughs> me, and uh, said that they wouldn't have time just because, you know, I mean, I would have turned down that interview for sure. There's no way I would do interviews and three shows in the same day. But um, yeah, he'll come back to Australia. I assume that he made money um, despite the obviously massive security costs. Um, so uh, hopefully I can get him on the podcast and I'd love to, uh, you know, Not even interview him. Just fucking have a chat for an hour. He seems like a fun dude. So yeah, sorry to disappoint you if you think he's fucking evil. And uh, also sorry to disappoint you if you think he's the the, the edgiest person on the planet. He was neither. He was just kind of a right-wing dude that said some funny fucked up jokes. That's how I view him, I suppose. If you want (laughs) to... You want to hear about a really fucked up dude? How crazy is Burke's backyard? Huh? If you haven't heard, is his name Ray Burke? Uh, The guy who hosts Burke's Backyard, which was his gardening show in Australia from... Fuck, when was it? It was ages ago on TV. I remember watching it when I was like 10. But I... Yeah, Burke's back. Don Burke. Uh, Apparently, he's uh, a little bit of a... A a little bit of a molesty dude. A sexual harasser. Dude, of course he is. His name is fucking Don Burke. Like, man... (laughs) Oh, dude, their theme song is... What's their theme song? Among the gum trees. I'll grab a girl by the tits. It's Burke's back door. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh man, yeah. So Don Burke, the fucking host of a gardening show, turns out to be some sexual harasser. If you aren't Australian, he's like uh, one of our most famous TV hosts. He had a show called Burke's Backyard for years and years and years. Um, and uh, it was recently unveiled. A whole bunch of women came out and said that he sexually harassed them or, or grabbed them in places they didn't want to be grabbed or, you know, the usual fucking Hollywood in the 70s type stuff. Um, sorry, someone's fucking texting me. Who's texting me? Oh, man. Who just says okay in a text? That's fucking... Just don't even respond. Yeah, so Don, Don Burke turns out to be a sexual harasser. You know, it was really... Um, Interesting, because after all of that stuff came out in Australia, like the, you know, the Harvey Weinstein shit, and then everybody else who, like Kevin Spacey, all of those Hollywood actors that turned out to be fucking creepy rapists, and or even, you know, Louis C.K. pulling his fucking dick out to, to show chicks, uh, all that kind of sexual harassment stuff going on in Hollywood, I, I could feel the tension and the desperation of the Australian media to, like, track down someone in Australia, in the Australian media business, who had also been doing this. And it they were, like, two weeks behind. It took them two weeks. And I was like, fuck, maybe they can't find anyone. Because, I um you know, being in this business, I, rem- I was speaking to... I spoke to a few girls who got emails from, like, five journalists literally asking, hey... You know, Michelle, have you ever had a male sexually harass you in your time in this entertainment business? If so, contact me here at news.com.au. And I was just thinking that that's so fucking pathetic that, like, the news doesn't give a fuck about this sexual harassment problem that exists in this uh, media industry that clearly isn't as big as they're trying to make it out to be. Not saying that it doesn't exist, but it's not like a fucking epidemic. Like, I'm, I'm, I work in the media, in the radio station, and it's not like you walk through the office and guys are like, hey, how you going, darling? Pinching girls on the ass and slapping them on the bum as f- for handing in fucking invoices. It doesn't happen... Um, well, it does happen, but it's not like a fucking epidemic. You know what I'm trying to say. And and I think that really proves that the media doesn't give a fuck about helping victims of sexual assault or harassment or anything like that. They just want to make money out of clicks and ads and selling fucking papers and exploiting this kind of shit to make money. Um, clearly because they're, they're emailing people and instead of going, hey, if you've experienced sexual harassment, maybe you could talk to a therapist or go to the police. They're like, hey, if you've experienced sexual harassment, contact me and I'll write it up and put it online and, and, and then we can have a six-month debate over whether or not you're lying for attention and then there will be no court case. We'll just ruin the guy's life regardless of whether he's done it and we'll ruin your life regardless of whether you're a real victim or not it's all for money it's all gross but yeah Burke's backyard did surprise me because he's just like it's <laughs> I don't know I just can't I just picture the guy in the garden checking out fucking roses and then be like and and trying to sniff one and go, hey have a sniff of this darling and then while she's sniffing a rose he just lies on his back <laughs> scooches under her and has a sniff of her asshole shouldn't laugh about that but that's the stuff that goes in uh, my brain um what else has been happening in my life Oh yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed this week's Lou review. I'm back to videos now, and I know, I know, I say that shit a lot, but um, I really feel good about this now. I think I've been weekly ever since the last bi-monthly bull. So I had so three weeks. Yeah, I've done three weeks in a row of weekly content. I had bi-monthly bull, and then I had the New Zealand tour live video, and then I had Lou review. The tour live video has been taken down for copyright because of um. I use Curse's new song, and it's just an automatic thing because um, I have permission from him to use his music, but Warner Brothers is the record label that his record label works with, and it's all automated, so it just takes the videos down, and I've appealed it, and uh, and, and, and then I've texted him about it, and he's like, oh, I can't do anything about it. I'm sorry, and it's, <laughs> it's like, fuck. So I'm going to re-upload that video just with different music um, shortly. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll do it on the same day I upload another video because I don't want to just spam people with, with what is essentially an old video. But I'll work that out. But what I'm trying to say is uh, I'm definitely going to be weekly from now. Um, 
and I've worked out what's holding me back just because the comedy special is over now and I was so focused on that special I couldn't everything else was put on the back burner I literally couldn't force myself to care about videos because it was so important but now it's over and I'm super excited to get into videos again and I don't have I'm I'm not doing the comedy festival this year I'm going to tour in September next year um, because I just think it's a better idea and it's a better time to tour there's less people doing fucking shows and the, the comedy festival is just a big fuck around to organize and and especially if you you don't have management, you got to suck their dick a little bit. And I'm just not, I just don't play that game. I'm like, I can't be bothered fucking sucking up people's asses just to get proper venues or, and I just don't care. So I'm like, whatever, I'll just do it in September. That's when everybody else, that's, you know, I don't do any other festivals in Australia. The comedy festival is amazing and I'm super happy that I started my career with it, but I've done it three times now. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? I would just rather do a Lewis Spears show and I can make it three hours if I want to. <laughs> Not that I would, but I have that freedom rather than restricting myself to an hour because there's a show on before me and after me in the same venue. So I don't know, just a bit of freedom for me. I just hate cunts controlling my shit. But yeah, um, I feel good about videos and I've been I've been doing it for three weeks and I'm going to try my best to stay weekly until at least the special comes out next year, which should be around, I don't know, early next year. I haven't picked what month yet. But um, what I've done to help me with this, because I've got radio and I've got stand-up and I'm trying to do videos and I have the podcast and everything that I'm trying to fucking do at the moment, uh, what I've done is I've hired on a part-time video editor, uh, Todd James Media, who filmed the New Zealand tour vlog and edited that. I've decided, you know what? Editing is what really holds me back. I've never been very good at it and it always takes me fucking eight hours to edit a 10-minute video. Why not? Instead of uh, me sitting there and and editing something, I'll give that to somebody else, and while they edit, I can write a new video, or while they edit, I can go and do a show, or record the podcast, I'm just trying to be more efficient with my, with my time, really, because I've come to accept that I'm doing so much shit, and even though I am a giant control freak, it's time to start delegating a little bit, so I'll never delegate writing or performing, but things like editing, if I can pick someone who's better at editing than me, it just makes the videos better. So, uh, yeah, I feel good about being much more consistent now that I have, you know, because editing, getting someone else to do it, it essentially takes a day uh, out of my schedule. So now I can use that time that I would spend editing, working on the radio show, writing dick jokes, writing the next video, filming a video, just having more time is really what I'm trying to say. So, um, yeah, expect more videos. Um, what are we up to? Shall we do, um, shall we get into miscellaneous bit of the end? Um, oh, that's right. I keep forgetting about this. Uh, the episode 100 is coming up and the live podcast, uh, is going to be happening on episode 100. That should be January sometime, uh, looking at the calendar. And, uh, what I did is I ran a poll to decide where I would do the episode 100 and I ran it in the Spearhead Sundays Facebook group, which you can find by searching... I think it's Spearhead Sunday's podcast group, is it? What is it? Um, where are we? What is it actually called? Yeah, Spearhead Sunday's podcast group. If you check that on Facebook, I put a post in there with a poll asking where everybody listens from and where I should do episode 100. Because episode 50 was in Melbourne, so I thought I would exclude them from the poll because I live here, I perform here all the time. I worked out, I guess, you know, gives give the love to some other cities and uh brisbane ended up winning the poll by quite a large margin despite there being less fans from brisbane my brizzy fans are fucking animals man i love performing in brisbane because it's like uh i couldn't even describe it to you it's like a fucking rock concert filled with alcoholics and and bears <laughs> bears on meth is what brisbane's like it's one of my favorite places to perform so um episode 100 will be in brisbane I'm going to work out a venue and tickets. I'm thinking I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, one ticket for every episode, so 100 seats. I'm going to announce it in the next few podcasts. Not too sure when. I will let you know. So how, if I figure out... So say... I don't know. I'll let you know when the tickets go on sale and I'm going to do the same thing where I won't post about it anywhere else. It'll just be for podcast listeners to get the opportunity to grab tickets. I think last time it sold out in like a day um, just from podcast listeners without me even posting the link anywhere. So hopefully uh, we can do it again this year. And uh, I'm thinking it'll be a sick night. I'm trying to figure out if I should, if I should have guests or if I should do a solo one because I've never done 
a podcast by myself and I've listened to Bill Burr. He did his first live podcast and he did it by himself and it sounded kind of cool. I mean, my stand-up shows are by myself, but also my stand-up shows are fucking written and meticulously rehearsed <laughs> over the course of a year. I didn't just show up, sit in a chair and be like, oh, boys and girls, so what happened to me this week? Uh, don't really do that shit. So I don't know. I'll work out something. Let me know what I should do for episode 100. If you have any, um, yeah, if you have any ideas of what I should do or how we should celebrate, um, and also uh, I want to give you guys a heads up. If you have any fan art or you want to make a video or an audio thing or you want to draw something or make something, anything, I would love to have uh, a bunch of fan art for episode 100. So if you have an idea or if you've been wanting to make something for me or what I do. Now would be a great time to start thinking about it or start making it in time for episode 100 for the podcast because I would just love to make a make it a big fan thing for you guys and for the listeners and, and for myself as well because I know you can't like this podcast for some reason so I would like to celebrate it with you and if you have any fan art or anything you want to make or even just edits of the podcast or favorite segments, whatever the fuck you have an idea to do, just do it. Send it my way, tag me in on Instagram or email it to me, whatever, you know. Send it my way. I'd love to see it. All right? With that bullshit out of the way, shall we get into uh, miscellaneous bit at the end? Yeah, we're getting into it a bit early, but uh, we got a bit of a... Got a got an update uh, coming on. So, um, where are we? I've written it down here. So, quick recap. In, last episode, in the last episode of the podcast... Uh, Jazz and I read an email from a listener called, uh, well, a listener emailing on behalf of his friend who noticed but did not meet a beautiful girl at my, at the live taping of my comedy special. And he didn't say hello to her in person, but what instead they decided to do was email me to try and arrange some kind of meeting on behalf of his friend. Basically, he was too much of a beta to go up to this girl and actually talk to her because she's too pretty. <laughs> so he decided to email me and I'll uh, and, and assume that I'm going to wingman this guy. So I read his email out and I threw it out into the ether. I did not name the girl because I wasn't sure if she wanted to be named. Um, and uh, Matt, if you're listening, he's, she's gotten back to you. Uh, well, she's gotten back to me, and I'm passing this on to you. So I've got the email here. The subject line is, uh, I'm apparently now known as Mandy's daughter and Matt's future wife. So that's the subject line. This is from the girl. Does she say her name in this email? I can't work out if I should reveal her name. No, I'm not revealing her name. Uh, so I'm going to call her F Claire. That's her name for the rest of this until she gives permission for me to put it out there because I don't want to send... A whole bunch of creeps at this girl. <laughs> um, hey, Lewis. Firstly, congratulations on the special. It was amazing and definitely your best performance yet. Thank you very much, Caitlin. I know you've seen a lot of my shows, so I, <laughs> I assume that you're not bullshitting. You at least have perspective. <laughs> um, I honestly don't know what to say right now other than what the fuck. Sorry, Matt. You're not off to a good start, Matt, buddy. What I thought was a sweet Romeo and Juliet tale about two losers falling in love slowly became the realization that the guys I saw outside drinking <laughs> I saw drinking outside the theater have emailed you. Okay, so she's seen you as well, Matt. So you've looked at this girl, she's a tall girl, pretty girl, and you're like, "Man, that's I want she's wearing a Louis Spears shirt. That's my fucking type." And she's seen you being like, "Man, that guy's drinking outside of a theatre because he's too cheap to pay for beers and he wants to get pissed before he sees a comedy show. That's my type of alcoholic guy. <laughs> or at least she noticed you. I don't know if she thought fucking awesome. She just did see you. Uh, the guys I saw drinking outside the theatre have emailed you about me. And then she's put in brackets, I'm pretty sure one of them was wearing a Thought Patrol shirt. So, fucking dreamboat material. Any any thoughts out there? Want to get with Matt? Fucking hit him up and he'll patrol the fuck out of your pussy. <laughs> The, uh, the hilarity sat in as I lay in bed listening to what should be known as mis miscellaneous suicide at the end, only to hear me say, is this Mandy's daughter? Actually, I think Jazz said that. Um, firstly, I'm surprised that I stood out in a sea of people 
uh, wearing the same clothes and Reese Maston fans. I'm not usually one to stand out. Secondly, I'm so curious, like, who is he? Mm. So, Matt, it seems like you may be in for a chance here, depending on if you're an ugly cunt or not. I mean, that's the vibe that I'm getting from this email is she's open to finding out who you are. But, you know, if you've got a fucking gap tooth bigger than that model chick in the in the London look ads, you might be you might be out of the out of <laughs> Um so yeah, I guess you know what what I'm going to do is I'm going to she hasn't given permission to uh to reveal who she is and I don't want to spend I don't want to send 7,000 podcast listeners after her. So what I'm going to do, Matt, or Matt your friend, if if uh Matt if you email me I will facilitate a linking up of these two, but on the condition, this is my condition, that you both update me from your perspective on how your meeting goes, whether you decide to go on a date, whether you decide not that interested, or whether you decide to press uh, stalker charges, I hear about it on the podcast. Um, oh, also, then I got a follow-up email from somebody else, from this, from Claire's mum. <laughs> <laughs> um, so where it says uh, for some reason she listens to my podcast also so shout out to Mandy I mean fuck it's just confusing uh, hey Lewis uh, um, wow imagine my dismay when I heard your podcast so look you got a bit of another you got another obstacle here one you might be an ugly unit two you got to get past this girl's mum uh, imagine my dismay when I heard your podcast. I mean, maybe you could date her mum. <laughs> uh, imagine my dismay when I heard your podcast. Here we were listening, thinking, wow, how sweet. Hang on, Mandy said here we were, but Sarah, or Claire, I keep forgetting what I'm calling her. I know her real name, but I keep forgetting her fucking fake name. Claire said she was laying in bed. So was she laying in bed with her mum? Fuck, Matt, I think you may have struck gold here, mate. If <laughs> these guys share a bed, you could be in for a fucking wild night. Um, uh, so here we were listening, thinking, wow, how sweet. Two nerds met. Why does everyone Why does everyone who comes to my show bag my audience? Like, they don't understand... It's at least, you know what, it's at least one in every 20 people who line up to meet me look around and go, dude, your audience, man, bunch of bunch of nerds, right? And I can guarantee you every single person who says, oh, aren't these guys nerds, is 10 times fucking nerdier looking than the people that they're referring to. <laughs> As like, dude, of course I attract nerds and weird cunts. I myself am a fucking weirdo. You know what? I the, my this is I've had a, a a lot of time to think. I've had I've had been doing shows for three years now, and I've seen my audience, and it's basically the same type of person. And I've had a lot of time to think about it. This is my audience, okay? My audience are not fucking nerds. They are a component of it. My audience are individuals. And I don't mean that in a yeah, we're so independent and so cool. My audience Every single person in there likes the thing that they like and don't give a fuck if it's nerdy, if it's not cool, if it's weird. So there is like a giant lad component of my audience where they rock up, they wear their dirty fucking Nike shoes, they're wearing their cursor merchandise, being like, fuck yeah, Aussie rap, I love it. And every one of their friends go, dude, Aussie rap sucks, your, your Nikes are dirty, please stop wearing a spray jacket and shorts inside, this is a formal area, what are you doing with your life? And they're like, I don't give a fuck, I'm a lad and I like what I like. And then there's another component of like nerds who are like, because who, who, I'm like that, I love the Aussie rap shit, but then the other side of me is the nerdy fucking computer guy cunt. He's like, yeah, fucking video games. And then that guy's friends are like, dude, why do you play video games so much? And he goes, I like video games. Fuck you. And then there's there's always like a few metal heads. I don't know where I've attracted them from. There's like always a quite a few sporty people, but like, not like, yeah, the boy's sporty, like a weird sport, like, I don't know, professional walking or badminton. They're like, that's my thing and I like it. My audience is full of people 
who are desperately looking for other people who also enjoy their interests. And I am one of those interests. I am one of those weird specific things that you really fucking like, but your friends either don't like it at all, don't like me at all, or go, yeah, you know, I mean, he's all right. (laughs) Because, and that's what I've had with my whole life. Every single thing that I feel really passionate about, nobody likes as much as me. Uh, I suppose Luke likes comedy as much as I do, and that's like the one person. Because otherwise, there's Aussie rap. I don't know a single person in my life that likes as much as I do. There's comic books. Again, no one likes as much as I do. There's weird, nerdy science fiction books. Again, no one likes as much as I do. And there's all the fucking video games uh, and the YouTube shit as well that I fucking love. Nobody in my life likes YouTube or making videos or paying attention to drama or video games as much as I do. So I, I think that that's my audience is a bunch of people who have really specific, solid interests and don't give a fuck about what other people think about those interests and hobbies. And that's why when you come to my show, you look at other people and you go, oh, there's fucking lads here, as if they don't like comic books. And then the comic book nerds go, no, then the lads go, oh, there's fucking comic book nerds, as if they don't like Cursor and stabbing people at a train station. And then the badminton people are like, oh my God, as if if that guy's carrying a knife, why don't you play badminton instead? Oi, Lewis, your audience, you're a bunch of fucking nerds. Cunt, you play badminton. You're a bigger nerd than everyone here. (laughs) Where, what am I doing? Oh, miscellaneous bit at the end. That's right. Um, where are we? Uh, I've just completely lost where I am. Oh, there we go. Uh, here we are listening, thinking, wow, how sweet. Two nerds met and exchanged glances at your show. And yeah, that's a perfect point. Now I'm yelling again. Mandy is a fucking mum. Okay, she's a mum and she listens to my podcast and comes to my shows. Mandy, if you can fucking bring three friends of that are in your age bracket to my shit and, and then have a conversation with them about how much they liked it, then and only then will I let you call the rest of my audience nerds. But until then, you are the one with the weird fucking interest in this situation and that weird interest is me. <laughs> um, uh, blah, blah, blah. How sweet. Two nerds met and exchanged glances at your show. Then the words, uh, then we heard the words, wait, is this Mandy's daughter? Well, it sure sounds like it. Matt, was that you and a mate throwing a sly one, throwing back a sly one when we pulled up? I assume that means drinking outside the theater. Matt, was that you drinking outside the theater when we pulled up? Or were you the classy dude eating fish and chips on the stairs? Or were you the one with the Putin t shirt? Or, I know Roman got her number. Dude, how many fucking people are hitting on this girl when she comes to my show? I fucking told you. If you listen to episode 50, I did this with my audience. It's like lads, nerds, weirdos, and then one gorgeous girl who has no other girlfriends that like my shit. Every show I do, there's one. And I'm pretty sure this girl was it because evidently as soon as she walked in the fucking room, my entire crowd was like, I gotta get her fucking phone number. Man. Dude, that's why I'm so happy that I'm not like, I, 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 I do not envy girls who are like 11s. Couldn't be bothered fucking turning down that many dudes everywhere I went. Um, I know Roman got a number. Seriously, why didn't you say hi? There's always next time. Hello to my mini fan club hugs, Mandy. So, yeah, look, man, the vibe that I'm getting from that is, uh, if you're not an ugly cunt, uh, <laughs> I think uh, she might be interested. So email me, I suppose, uh, Matt, and uh, I will forward on your contact details and a little bit about you to this mystery girl and. If she's interested, you will hear from her. Either way, uh, both of you need to give me an update in exchange for this middleman dating services. And if you get married, I expect to be... uh, Actually, I can't be fucked being the best man. I'm not going to do anything at your wedding. I'm sorry, guys. Um, Couldn't be fucked. (laughs) I don't know what I'm doing in five or ten years. So, 
Yeah, I mean, I'll do it if you pay me. <laughs> um, yeah, all right, guys. Um, I got to cut it there because I need to fucking leave. I got to get out of this radio station because I'm promising myself that I'm leaving here at fucking... I left at 9 p.m. when I put that Lou review out and it's just way too much. So yeah, oh, also, before I go, let me know how the volume sounds on this podcast because uh, I'm pretty sure that a few, a few people have told me recently since I've using this new equipment that it's a little bit quiet. So I'm going to try and boost the levels. Let me know about the sound quality on this episode. If it's too loud, if it sounds shit, let, do let me know and I'll fuck with it a little bit more and uh, do my best to fix it. So yeah, thank you very much for listening to the Speared Sunday's podcast or, or watching if you're on YouTube. If you would like to get access to the episodes early, consider supporting me on Patreon. It makes everything I do much easier. Um, and, you know, like I said, I've brought on an editor. That's more money that I'm throwing back into the fucking hole so if you want to help my content get better more consistent higher quality and uh, also keep me from being homeless which is a key component of my career uh, support me on Patreon you get early access to everything cheaper tickets cheaper merch free merch you know there's a bunch of rewards check it out just google Lewis for his Patreon and uh, yeah thank you very much for listening guys I will talk to you next Sunday and I hope you have the shittest one ever